Hey there, and welcome to my guide on how to beat both Jotaro Part 6 and Dio Over Heaven. I know a lot of people struggle with these bosses while they're trying to get both Made in Heaven and the World Over Heaven, so I figured I'd go out and try to lab out the absolute best ways to beat both of them, and then hopefully that can help some of you out. Over the last two or three days, on and off, I've been working towards figuring out the absolute best ways to deal with both of these bosses, especially after the buff to Jotaro Part 6, which made it so his Skull Crusher was unparryable. This made the boss a whole lot harder, so obviously new strategies had to be developed. I should note at the beginning of this that all of the strategies I'm going to be discussing today are solo strategies. Both of these bosses are considerably easier if you have people helping you, so I highly recommend, if you can, that you get one or two other people to help you with the boss, as it'll make it way easier. But if you're willing to put in the time and effort, and are at least remotely competent at the game, I guarantee you that you can beat the bosses in a reasonable amount of time, and you can do it consistently. Anyways, I don't want to harp on too long here, so I'm going to wrap it up, and we can get things started. So the way I'm going to lay these things out is that I'm going to talk about the quirks of the AI, things you need to know, and in the background will be some of my more sloppy runs just so you have a general idea of what's going on. And then once I've finished talking about all of those things, we'll take it step by step going through my best run, talking about all the decisions I made, which ones I made correctly, when I made mistakes, and how I recovered from those mistakes in order to make sure that I got the most damage. So starting things off with Dio over Heaven using Sea Moon. The reason I started here is because this is the highest likelihood combination that I'm going to see the most people trying to fight Dio over Heaven with. Since you need to kill him in order to get Made in Heaven and get the bone, I figured this would be a good starting point. The thing to know about Sea Moon is that it's a surprisingly solid stand at fighting these bosses. Both Jotaro Part 6 and Dio over Heaven have pretty glaring weaknesses when fighting against Sea Moon. The only problem is that Sea Moon doesn't do a whole lot of base damage, which kind of hurts it in the long run. I'll say right now that using the world is a whole lot easier on this fight, but we'll get there. Anyways, as for quirks of Dio over Heaven, what you need to know is that, first of all, no matter what, every single time, Dio over Heaven will do a heavy punch after he does his barrage. There is no room for interpretation here. It happens every single time, no matter what. What this means is, unlike in the background footage you're seeing right now, when he barrages you, you should never barrage back. If you barrage back, he can't do the heavy punch, you can't parry it, and you lose out on a little bit of damage. The other thing is that both Jotaro Part 6 and Dio Over Heaven really, really, really like to break your block. They react to you, unlike all the other bosses in this game. Meaning if you just stand there and hold block, they're going to use block breaks. We're going to use this to our advantage to screw over the AI by thinking it can block break us and then parrying it or taking the hit in order to manipulate it into doing another option so that we can punish it. The last thing to touch on with Sea Moon and Dio Over Heaven as a whole is that if you let them get time stop and they start using time stops regularly, you're pretty much screwed. So you really need to put the pressure on when they start time stopping. But anyways, let's jump into my best run and I'll commentate you through it and stop it when necessary. The way you should pretty much always start with Sea Moon is three M1s, a surface inversion punch, and then either a heavy punch if you don't have him on or a zoom punch if you do have him on. The reason we do it this way is two reasons. First of all, you get a decent amount of damage off of the surface inversion punch. And second off, we want him far away from us so that he'll do a teleport behind us move straight off the bat. Now you'll notice here that he teleports behind me and does a heavy punch, and I don't parry or block it, and I let myself get hit. There's a very good reason for this, but first, the reason that he did a heavy punch instead of doing M1s like he normally would is because I was holding block. You should be holding block here so that he does the heavy punch to try to break your block. And when he teleports behind you, let go of block so it knocks you down. The reason that we're having it knock you down instead of waiting to see if they'll do M1s or the heavy punch is consistency's sake. If you're holding block, then he'll teleport behind you and do a heavy punch every single time. And the reason that we can't parry it is because there's actually a small amount of stun when they teleport behind you. That time skip has stun on it. 
not sure why. So even if you react to it and let go and reblock at the right time, it will never parry because of the stun. Now right after I get knocked down, I hold block in order to block when I stand back up. The reason I do this is if he decides to barrage, I want to block the barrage. He doesn't go for the barrage and tries to break my block again, in which case I try to parry it and I fail. It's much better to try to parry it and mess up the timing and get knocked down than it is to mess up the timing and get block broken, as getting block broken will lead to a lot of damage. Once again, I hold block while standing up, and he goes for the barrage I was waiting for. I wait out the whole barrage and parry the barrage finisher at the end, grabbing three M1s in the process, and a barrage since he doesn't have his barrage anymore. Now after the barrage, I do one M1 and a heavy punch with this weird camera flick, which happens to break their block. I'd like to say now that this is an anomaly. Normally, they almost never block here. And the reason that I did that heavy punch with a weird camera flick after 1M1 is in order to try to counter his Heaven Ascended Smite. After parrying the heavy punch after their barrage and then barraging them back, a lot of the time after your barrage, they'll go for the smite. So if you do 1M1 and then use a heavy punch and turn it around since they teleport behind you, you can hit them before Heaven Ascended Smite even comes out and it will make it so that the move gets cancelled. Because I wasn't ready for the block break, I overextend a bit with M1s, and he catches me with a barrage. Notice, as I said earlier, I don't barrage back here, and I wait until the barrage is concluded, and parry the heavy punch so that I can get some more damage. Now right here, you can see the concept I was talking about earlier in action. Since I anticipated the Heaven Ascended Smite coming, I did 1M1, a heavy punch, turned it around, and cancelled the smite before the lightning came down. Now the next thing to note is that if you do manage to cancel Cancel the Heaven Ascended Smite, as you see here, I held block right after doing the Heavy Punch, because they'll barrage immediately after having their Smite cancelled, since the barrage will just come back. This right here I got caught with a little bit of bad RNG, as this boss fight has plenty of it, you just need to be ready for it, and what ended up happening is I thought they were going to go for a Smite, and instead the AI decided to heal themselves instead, and since I was in the end lag of the Heavy Punch, they immediately hit me with the Smite right afterwards. Now here is an unfortunate common occurrence with the boss fights for both Jotaro Part 6 and Dio Over Heaven, where they go absolutely ape sh and fly around the arena like a crackhead. Thankfully, in here, the AI almost never despawns, but sometimes it can happen with Jotaro Part 6, and it's incredibly frustrating. So hopefully, one of these days, that gets patched out. Now we're at the point where Dio Over Heaven will spam time stops since they're at about 25% of their HP remaining. This means that we need to get as much damage as we can as fast as we can, throwing caution to the wind since we've been careful up until this point and have quite a huge HP buffer. We want to make sure that he does as many non-time stop attacks as possible to try to delay in between each time stop. The idea is to get time stopped as little as possible. In order to get this started, I bank by using a counter and hoping that he will use any move that is not time stop. Since the counter lasts so long, I can basically be guaranteed to land it no matter what. If he teleports behind and does a heavy punch, he gets countered. If he teleports behind and does a smite, he gets countered. And if he decides to just outright attack me, he's going to get countered. So no matter what, I'm going to get a combo, and I need damage right now. So that's exactly what I'll be doing. My gamble paid off, and he decides to barrage me, which means that he doesn't have his barrage anymore, meaning I can get my 4M1s, a barrage, and after the barrage, I decide to mash uppercut to the moon. There's two reasons I went for uppercut to the moon here. The first is that Dio Over Heaven basically never blocks after getting comboed, so I was not worried about getting blocked or parried. And the second is I was heavily anticipating that he would time stop, and I wanted to get an uppercut so I could throw him away during his time stop instead of having to sit there and get comboed by it. The reason I knew this was coming is because time stop basically replaces Heaven Ascended Smite for Dio Over Heaven once he gets below 25% HP. If he's at a point where normally you think he's going to smite, he's probably going to time stop. So you're gonna want to be using your uppercut to the moon in order to get him away from you so you take less damage in time stop. I was right here and he did do a time stop and because the AIs are BS, they have no way of having their time stop cancelled, which means even in my uppercut to the moon, he still stopped time. Whatever. Now after the time skip concluded, he time skipped to me and started doing M1s because I wasn't blocking before the time skip happened. If he does M1s, hold block until your block comes out, and then parry the heavy punch at the end of it. Sometimes he'll do a fifth punch instead of a heavy punch, and this kind of sucks. But assuming he does the heavy punch, you should parry it. Now after the parry, I do four M1s and then immediately hold block. 
if you ever get a parry against Dio over heaven and he hasn't used his barrage yet or in a quite a while, he's always going to use it after a parry. So get your damage and then hold block because he's going to barrage and then heavy punch you again, which you can parry and get even more damage. Now after the second parry, admittedly, I should have killed him. I did four M1s, a gravitational shift, and I was going to do three more M1s and then a barrage, which likely would have finished off the rest of his health. Unfortunately, the AI has a large tendency of breaking, as I've already said, and he decided to fly into the sky, meaning that if I used my barrage, it would have just whiffed and he would have time stopped me anyway. Regardless of the time stop, I decided to throw my counter out immediately, since I knew he didn't have the time stop, so he had no way of hitting through it without hitting himself. I held block while using the counter, since I knew that he still had his barrage, so he was likely going to barrage once he hit my counter if he didn't use this barrage to initially hit it, which he did not, which led me to blocking the barrage, parrying the final hit, and finishing him off. At the fight's conclusion, you can see that I completed the entire thing and had full health at the end of it. The main takeaways you need to know about Seamoon is that you need to be careful, know when to use your moves, and know how and when the AI is going to go for certain moves. Because of this, and just to try to be as helpful as possible, I'm going to go through other clips I have of me making mistakes and showing how you should react to making these mistakes. Because obviously, not every run is going to be like this one where you finish with full HP. You're bound to make some mistakes, you just need to make sure that you recover from those mistakes, don't panic, and most of all, don't just mash buttons. You need to think. This one right here is going to be the most common mistake people make. Whether it's because of bad RNG or you mess up, if they use a Heaven Ascended Smite, first of all, don't block it. Just take the hit. It's not worth whatever damage comes after it when you get block broken, especially if it's M1s. Now after getting hit by the Heaven Ascended Smite, your stand is knocked away. Now the mistake I see a lot of people making, basically everyone, is that instead of trying to deal with what's coming, they try to resummon their stand. They try to run, resummon their stand, and all that happens is they get barraged or comboed or take a bunch of M1 damage. It's just not worth it. Almost every single time after you get hit by Heaven Ascended Smite, you're going to get barraged. So what this means is you need to, once again, not panic, don't try to summon your stand, and simply hold block, and then parry the barrage finisher at the end of it. After this, you can move on as normal, resummon your stand, get the combo, continue playing. The other big mistake, which I don't really have footage for, is people overextending and then getting barraged. What I mean by this is attacking too many times after a parry, or just mashing M1s out, and then getting barraged for it. Hands down, the most damage you're ever going to take from Heaven Ascended Dio is from his barrage. It does quite a bit of damage, and he can constantly barrage trade you with it since he has way more health than you. So the more barrages you take, the way worse off you are. So whatever you do, do not overextend, block often, and you can certainly reliably take on Dio over Heaven with Simu. Now moving on over to fighting Dio over heaven with the world, like I said, things get a whole lot better. The world is one of the best stands for fighting the bosses, seeing as he has a true double barrage, which means that if you punish, you can punish hard with both of these barrages. And since it's not a player, they're constantly in range and constantly getting parried, which means you can get consistent big damage. This all on top of the fact that you have a time skip, which you can use to get out of the Heaven Ascended Smite, and a rage mode, which just generally makes the fight way easier. So the first tip before we even start getting into tips is if you're really struggling with this, get rage before you go into the arena so that you start with the bonus rather than getting it midway through. It will help a whole lot. But anyways, let's jump to my best run, and I'll give you the play-by-play -play regardless. So starting things off here, I start with knives, try to get four M1s, a barrage, a zoom punch, and then the second barrage. This is all a true combo against these bosses in particular, since they don't immediately summon their stands. But I screwed up the zoom punch, it is what it is, can't win them all. So after this, he decides to M1, which I block, and then follow it up with a heavy punch, which I parry. After the parry, I grab a few M1s and then block, because I know the barrage is coming, as he has not used that yet. After blocking the barrage, parrying the finisher at the end, I grab some more M1s, a barrage, and then after the barrage concludes, a kick barrage. Now because he tried to barrage me again right at the end of the kick barrage, he couldn't avoid the final hit. 
which means he now does not have a barrage and got hit by the final hit, which gives me a good bit of damage. Now at this point, since he doesn't have a barrage, he has a few options. I'm going to hold block so he either teleports behind me and does a heavy punch, teleports behind me and does a smite, or starts trying to M1. Right now I'm prepping for the worst, which is him doing a smite. Because of this, I've unlocked my camera from shift lock, and I'm pointing my cursor somewhere far enough away that's safe and outside of the range if he tries to do a smite. This way, when he goes to do it, I can react to the sound cue and just have to press my time skip key and I'll avoid it. Just as I said, he goes for the smite, I time skip and dodge it. Because AI is OP, he has no end lag on his smite and immediately teleports to me and starts M1ing. It should also be noted that he does do the fifth M1 here, which knocks me down. I was expecting a heavy punch, which didn't come, but if they do do a fifth M1, when you get knocked down, make sure you're holding block because if they decide to barrage while you're standing up and you're not blocking, you're gonna get hit. The AI followed it up by blocking and then going for a heavy punch, which I failed to parry, but didn't get block broken. After standing up, I block the inevitable barrage and parry the finisher afterwards, getting my combo same as before. It should also be noted that by this point, I have my rage, which I use in between the barrage and the kick barrage in order to make sure I have the least downtime while activating it. Upon getting up, the AI uses time stop, which I immediately respond with a road roller since I'm invincible during the move it has a massive hitbox, and since the AI is constantly running towards you, it's effectively a guaranteed hit, assuming that they don't bug out. I anticipate another smite coming, dodge it, get barraged, and decide that I have so much health and they have so little, I might as well just barrage back at this point, do a kick barrage, and that'll wrap up the rest of his health, taking him out. As I've said already, it's considerably easier to use the world than Seamoon while doing this boss fight. That's mostly because the world has a higher destructive power and just better tools. Having that second barrage is ungodly helpful, and getting a bunch more damage off of your M1s in between combos is also really good. And to stack the fact that you have a time stop counter with Road Roller, and a rage mode which makes you take less damage and do more damage, overall the world is a really really solid choice. So if you're struggling with the world on this, just take some of the advice I've got here, and you should be able to do it no problem. But you know what? I know what some of you are asking. How do I just absolutely trivialize this boss fight? How do I make Heaven Ascension Dio regret the day that he was added to your bizarre adventure? That's right, it's Star Platinum in the World. If you have Star Platinum in the World and you can't beat Heaven Ascension Dio, God help you. This is the most brainless and easy stand to beat any of the bosses in the entire game, and it doesn't even come close. Especially when it comes to Heaven Ascension Dio, and I'll talk about Jotaro Part 6 later. As I said earlier, the AI has an absolute hard-on for breaking your block, but when your block is unbreakable, and defaultly parries anything thrown at you while you're awakened, it basically means that you can hold block, and they'll hand you combos. How kind of them! It's basically impossible to lose with Star Platinum in the World if you're fighting Dio over Heaven, unless you're really bad. In fact, I killed Heaven Ascension Dio so hard that the game broke itself to pieces. Holy shit! What just happened? Um... Alright, we're moving off of Heaven Ascension Dio and moving on to Jotaro Part 6. Now this boss is interesting because they changed it from being brain dead easy to being probably the most BS boss in maybe any game I've ever played. It is complete nonsense and the way it's implemented into the game drives me nuts. But regardless, basically what happened was you used to be able to just parry the Skull Crusher like you can normal Star Platinum in the world. Meaning that you could run away, parry the Skull Crusher, use some moves. For Sea Moon it was really easy. Just uppercut to the moon, run, parry Skull Crusher, surface inversion, run away, parry Skull Crusher, rinse repeat. Well, you can't do that anymore because now Skull Crusher hits you no matter what, which is really annoying. They should have just made the move blockable. But no, now it just hits you and you can't parry it. The main problem isn't that though. No, the main problem is that number one, he has an awakening, which he uses immediately, which means that he does more damage to you and you do less damage to him, which is a serious pain. And you remember this move from Do You Over Heaven? Well, what if we replace that with this move? 
So you remember when I was talking about how Dio over Heaven has stun when he teleports behind you with his time skip? Well, you know who else has stun when he teleports behind you with his time skip? Oh, did you guess Jotaro Part 6? So did I, what a coincidence. You remember when I also said that because of this stun, you couldn't parry the heavy punch when they time skipped behind you and used it and you just had to take the hit? Well, take a wild guess as to what that means with beatdown. That's right, Jotaro Part 6 can confirm beatdown off of time skip because whoever made it hates me. I don't know. They hate the whole player base. Why in the world of holy hell does Jotaro Part 6's time skip that has beatdown on it also have stun? It basically means that if they decide to use it on you, you're screwed. Well, for the most part anyway. As per usual, there's still counterplay. It's just that all of that counterplay relies entirely on prediction rather than reaction. So not really skill anymore. And because the developers themselves don't want to have skill in this boss fight, I decided, fine, we never will have skill in this boss fight, and I'll continue to cheese it. That's right, you can cheese it again. And I'm gonna show you how. For the first step of the process, you're gonna use gravitational shift and then immediately uppercut to the moon and throw Jotaro Part 6 away. The second he takes his stand out, he's going to use his Skull Crusher. So use your counter so you can counter the Skull Crusher. All the while during this, you should be running towards the castle because this is our cheesing area. After hitting the counter, jump up on top of the castle and go to this specific area that I'm at now. It should be noted that if you're too close to the edge, he'll be able to teleport up there and beat down you later once he gets to lower health. And and if you're too far to the left, then he'll be able to climb up the ledge on the left and then you'll get screwed. Now once you're up here, deploy your pilot and run down and fight Jotaro Part 6. Jotaro Part 6 and all the other NPCs in the game have this strange condition where they actually have stands, but despite that, they can't see stands. It's really truly a shame. And because of that, when you pilot stands, they have a hard-on for attacking the user and completely ignore your piloting stand. This means that you can beat the absolute loving sh** out of this beat downing mother and there's nothing he can do about it. And I know some of you are asking, well, can't he just skull crusher up there? And that's where your own personal attacks come in. If you're attacking him enough, then when he goes to use the skull crusher, you'll hit him. And if you get hit during skull crusher, it cancels. Some of you are also probably asking, why doesn't he just hit you with his platinum slam, which would knock your stand out? And that would be a good question if it worked, but it doesn't. And YBA is a buggy mess, so it doesn't. Whatever. So if you're struggling with Jotaro Part 6, there you go. You can complete it for free. But you know what? It's never really over, is it? Some things come back to haunt you no matter what. That's right, Star Platinum the World's back to ruin yet another boss fight. Star Platinum the World just absolutely obliterates Jotaro Part 6. And I guess that's not hugely surprising considering that everything Jotaro Part 6 has, aside from Skull Crusher, is an easy parry. In other words, you can just sit here and hold block and they'll hand you combos just as usual. Parry a move, 4M1s, barrage, kick barrage, hold block, let go of block if they do a Skull Crusher, no biggie. And on top of that, you remember that unparryable beatdown from before? Yeah, that's right. F*** you, Chodor of Part 6. How do you like me now? Seriously though, all you gotta do, block a whole lot, and then right as he's about to time stop, use the beatdown, and he's pretty much dead no matter what every single time. Don't even bother using any of the moves other than barrage and kick barrage with beatdown. You just get way more damage using everything else. And killing him like this is absolute child's play. Like it doesn't take any skill or any effort, you can just do it. So if you're trying to kill him and you have Star Plan of the World, it's a cakewalk. A toddler could probably pull this off. But anyways, I think that concludes the guide sections for both Jotaro Part 6 and Heaven Ascension Dio. I hope that this guide could help you out. I think I went really, really in-depth. So hopefully for some of you that are struggling, this can help you out, especially on Heaven Ascension Dio, since that one you can't really cheese. And one last little note is that pretty much everything I said about Heaven Ascension Dio's AI applies to Jotaro Part 6 as well. He has the same kind of patterns that Heaven Ascension Dio has. You probably saw it in the Sea Moon section, maybe you didn't but I did manage to heavy punch him when he was going to do the unparryable beatdown, which felt really, really good. I'll probably flash it on screen right now. 
and he'll also do a heavy punch after barrage every single time. But regardless, the video is pretty much over and I'm still talking, and I shouldn't be. So with all that being said, have a wonderful day or night wherever you are. I hope this helped, and I'll see you next time.